You don't want a video lecture for metric conversions. When we convert units of, me of metric measure, we use a process called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis makes use of conversion factors. A conversion factor is based off of an equality, where one thing is equal to something else. So, for example, if we we're talking about time, we could say that 60 seconds is equal to one minute, and in the same breath, say that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. We can write conversion factor where we say that 60 seconds is equal to one minute, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Both of these say the same thing. They're both the same ratio, but they're going to be used differently. Another example would be to say in one dollar is equal to four quarters. And four quarters is equal to one dollar. We can write their conversion factor as one dollar over four quarters, or four quarters over one dollar. So let's write some other conversion factors for time. If we wanted to know the relationship between years and days, we would say that one year is equal to 365 days. So our conversion factor can be one year over 365 days, or 365 days over one year. It doesn't matter what our relationship is. Whether it's time, like 24 hours is equal to one day, or any sort of made-up unit where we could say 2.2 .2 zaps equals 3 pows. We can still write conversion factors. This one would be 24 hours over one day, or one day over 24 hours. This one could be 2.2 .2 zaps over 3 pows, or 3 pows over 2.2 .2 zaps. So it doesn't matter what we have. As long as we have a relationship, as long as we have an equality, we can write a conversion factor. So using dimensional analysis, let's convert 37 minutes into seconds. Now we have our conversion table here, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our given, which is 37 minutes, and we're going to put it here in the upper left-hand corner. So 37 minutes. If we want to convert minutes to seconds, we need to know the relationship, and we know that one, we know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So from this relationship, what we'll do is we take the unit that we want to cancel. So there are one minute we want to cancel, and we put it on the bottom. And we take our unit that we don't want, or our unit that we want remaining, and we put it on top. So now, we have minutes on the top and minutes on the bottom. So they cancel out, and the unit we're left with is seconds. So we take 37, so we take 37 times 60, and we get 2,220. Our answer includes two things. It includes a number, a unit. So how many meters are there in 15 centimeters? Well, we take our 15 centimeters, which is what we know, and we place it in the top left, 15 centimeters. We need to know the relationship between centimeters and meters. Well, meters is the bigger unit, so it's a 1. And centimeters needs 100. So we have 100 centimeters in 1 meter. So we'll put our 100 centimeters on the bottom, and our one meter on the top, centimeters cancels, so we have 15 times 1 divided by 100, and we get 0 0.15 meters as an answer. Remember, as we're reading our conversion bridge, what we say is we start here, and we multiply across this line, and we divide across this line. So how many grams are there in 10.5 kilograms? 
Well, we take our 10.5 kilograms and we put it in the top left where our known goes, 10.5 kilograms. Now we need the relationship between kilograms and grams. Grams is bigger, so one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Here we put our one kilogram on the bottom because we want it to cancel. Our 1,000 grams goes on the top. So now following our steps, from here to here we multiply. So we take 10.5 times 1,000 and then our next step is to divide, so 10.5 times 1,000 divided by 1 equals 10,500 grams because our kilograms cancels out. How many liters are there in 500 milliliters? Take our 500 milliliters and we put it into our upper left, our given goes. We need the relationship between milliliters and liters. We know that one milliliter or one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. One thousand milliliters on the bottom, one liter on the top. So following our steps, step number one is to multiply. So it's five hundred times one. Step number two is to divide, divided by a thousand. So five hundred times one divided by a thousand equals zero point five and our unit is liters. How many kilometers are there in 163 centimeters? So the first thing we do is we take our 163 centimeters and we put it in the top left hand corner because that's where we're going to start. Now most of us don't know how many centimeters there are when it's related to kilometers. However we do know how many centimeters, how centimeters compares to meters. We know that 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. We also know that 1 meter is equal to 1,000 kilometers. We do our first conversion factor. We take 100 centimeters on the bottom to get centimeters to cancel and 1 meter on top. Our second conversion factor, our second conversion factor, the 1 meter equals 1,000, sorry about that, the 1,000 meters equaling one kilometer, our second conversion factor, will go in the second part of the table. Here we have meters on the top, so we need our 1,000 meters on the bottom and our one kilometer on top. So now meters cancels, the unit we're left with is kilometers, which is what we want. So doing our math, our first step is to multiply across so we have 163 times 1. Step number 2 is to divide. Divide that by 1,000. Our next step as we come back up is to multiply again. We're going to multiply by 1 again and then back down. 163 times 1 divided by 1,000 times 1 divided by 1,000 is equal to 0 0.000163 and the only unit we have left is kilometers. How many kilograms are in 1,600 milligrams? Step number one is to take our 1,600 milligrams and put it in our top left where our given goes. Now, we don't know the relationship between milligrams and kilograms, but we do know the relationship between milligrams and grams. 1 gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So 1,000 milligrams goes on the bottom to get the units to cancel, and our 1 gram goes on top. We also know the relationship between grams and kilograms. And we know that 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. So 1,000 grams goes on the bottom to get the units to cancel, and one kilogram goes on top. So our math is to first multiply, and divide, multiply, and then divide. So 1,600 times one divided by 1,000 times one divided by 1,000 is 0 0.0016 kilograms. We can do the metric conversions going between English units like inches and metric units like millimeters. What we need is a relationship, like the 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. 
So we take our given, our 20 inches, and we put it on the top. And we take our, from our equality, we put one inch on the bottom, get inches to cancel. And we have 2.54 centimeters. Now, some of us may know the relationship between centimeters and millimeters. But if you don't, you still know the relationship of 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. So we can put our 100 centimeters on the bottom. We can put our 1 meter on the top. And then add another bridge when we know that 1 meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. So our 1 meter on the bottom, our 1,000 millimeters on the top. And so again, multiply, divide, multiply, divide, multiply, divide. So 20 times 2.54 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 100 times 1,000 divided by 1. And we get 508 millimeters, the only unit that we have that doesn't get canceled.